everybody, Nikki Niveson, Conservation Educator here at the Salado Wildlife Education Center. Thanks for tuning in again for our Pollinator Week virtual um, to learn about pollination and some of the pollinators that you may not realize are actually pollinators. So first, what we're going to talk about is pollination. What is it? So pollination is when pollen grains go from the anther or the male part of the flower to the stamen, which is the female part of the flower, to create seeds. And the reason why we need seeds, if we don't have seeds, there's no ge next generation for our plants. And we always wanna have our flowers around to keep our pollinators happy. So there's different types of pollination that are around. There's self-pollination, and that happens with flowers that have both male and female parts. There is wind and water pollination. So if you're like me and you have allergies in the springtime, you can think the wind pollinated plants like the trees and stuff when the wind picks up the pollen goes and that's how it just works same with water pollination as well for our water plants some of those guys well they drop the pollen in the water and it just trickles on down to the next plant and that's how that works but the pollination we're going to talk about today is the pollination that we need with the use of pollinators so i have a little demonstration here we have our cute nifty nifty little monarch butterfly puppet here hello everybody and we're going to demonstrate pollination. So this is a bowl of flour, just regular home flour you use for baking. And our butterfly here is going to land on this and it's our pollen. And so as you can see, the pollen sticks to the belly or the abdomen of the butterfly. And when that butterfly goes to the next plant, our little flower here, and it lands. And as you can see, that pollen drops down in there. And so that's how pollination with the use of pollinators works. That pollen, they move from plant to plant, actually having that pollen move around to the other plants. And that's how you get your cross pollination via pollinators. Now pollinators are bigger than bees. So yesterday's video or today's video, you heard about monarch butterflies, which we have right here. We have our monarch butterflies. We talked a little bit about those. We also talked about our bee species, our bumblebees here. And so they're bigger than bees and butterflies. We have approximately 20,000 species that are considered pollinators. They range anywhere from birds, bats, butterflies and moths, bees, wasp beetles, flies, you name it, small mammals even those guys, even some reptiles and amphibians help with pollination, depending on where you're at in the world or even in the state, it just kind of depends. Now, pollinators are used a lot in anything you can think of. If you like your coffee, your chocolate, any kind of foods like that, well, they help with that, almonds especially, and even clothing. So like material that is made out of cotton or fibers and things like that, if it wasn't for our pollinators, we wouldn't have half of the stuff that we have now. And if you didn't know, one out of every three bites of food, you have to thank a pollinator for because you wouldn't have it if it wasn't for them. So next time you see a little bumblebee flying around, say thank you. And monetarily, so pollinators are very important to the global economy as a whole. $30 billion annually in the global scale you can thank pollinators for because if it wasn't for pollinators, like I said, those crops, those food crops or the crops we use to make clothing or fibers and things like that, it wouldn't be possible. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit about pollinators that you may not realize are actually pollinators, okay? So like I said, we talked about our butterflies and our moths, but now we're gonna talk about flies. So a lot of people are like, flies, they're not pollinators, are they? Well, if you've ever drove by a Bradford pear tree, those things are stinky as all get out, if you know what I'm talking about. Those are fly pollinated. But some of our native plants, like the Ohio spiderwort, which decided it was gonna close up on us early, um, they can be fly pollinated. Wasps are another species that are considered pollinators. Now, some people don't like them because they may sting and cause some issues, and that's okay, but they are around for a reason. And you can find them pollinating common milkweed flowers like this one right here. And then you have your hummingbirds. So a lot of people think, ooh, hummingbirds, they're so pretty. Now, they will pollinate, sometimes they'll pollinate this bee balm here or cardinal flowers, which I don't have an example of, and even sometimes this wild columbine, depending on what they can find. 
And then one more other bird that we're going to talk about is the Baltimore Oriole. Now in the state of Kentucky, those are birds that migrate in through Kentucky, but they also, they love nectaring plants and trees and things. So you can see them actually pollinating as well. Sometimes pollinators may not be considered pollinators in a specific area, but they might accidentally pollinate. And so I consider those guys pollinators as well, like our small mammals. Um, even our little tiny birds that you may see in the background flying. If they land on a plant, they might tr pick up some pollen and transfer it to another plant, not realizing it, and that's okay. Pollinators are a variety of things. Even humans can be considered pollinators. Sometimes if pollinators aren't around in our agriculture industry, they may have to pollinate by hand. So us as humans, we would have to take each individual grain of pollen and transfer it ourselves to another plant and vice versa. So sometimes we have to be pollinators. Now, like I said, pollinators are important. And if you've been watching the last couple of videos, we really appreciate it. But there's some things that you can do to help. So if you watched the first video, we talked about habitats and creating a good pollinator habitat. Make sure that if you want pollinators around like our hummingbirds and our bees and our butterflies, create a native habitat. Some of these flowers, if you have questions on them, comment in below and we'll tell you what we've got so you can learn how to better enhance your habitat in your own backyard. You can also gain more knowledge. If you understand more and you know more information, you're able to help a lot better. And we have different plans. There is the Kentucky Pollinator Handbook the Kentucky Pollinator Protection Plan. We also have, like I said in the first video, the Monarch Conservation Plan that we as a department have put together. And these plans help give you information not only on the species of pollinators that we have, but how you can help protect them. You can also look on websites like Pollinator Partnership, which actually is the host for National Pollinator Week, which is this week. And that's why we're doing these videos. You can also join Kentucky Wild. You don't have to be a Kentucky member or native to join Kentucky Wild. You don't have to live here, but Kentucky Wild is a great part of what we do. They help with our non-game species, especially our monarch conservation and our other pollinators as well. So thank you so much for tuning in to this week's Pollinator Week virtual tour, as I want to call it, and go out, enjoy, take a look and actually visualize what your pollinators are doing. And next time you see a bumblebee or a butterfly, say thank you. You guys have a great day. Thank you so much for joining.